We have finally got brand new GPUs. I am so excited. After being on a 980 Ti and still wanting so much more power, I'm elated we have finally gotten to see the next step in graphical technology. I'm just so happy. So as I'm sure you all know, we have got the GTX 1080 and GTX 1070 coming from NVIDIA at the end of the month. And I think that, especially for us ultra-wide gamers, that extra horsepower is a very welcome addition, as most specifically those of us running at 3440 by 1440 it's just impossible for us, even with crazy 980 Ti SLI setups, to run most AAA games on ultra settings and run them at anywhere close to 100 FPS. It simply isn't feasible at the moment. And whilst I still question if this set of new GPUs will get us there, I have no doubt that they will get us damn close. The big one for me here is price, with both the GTX 1080 and 1070 both more powerful than a Titan X and at a fraction of the cost. It will just drive down the cost of entry for both those users looking to upgrade to 1440p screens, as that is currently an expensive leap. And as importantly, it drives down the cost of entry into the PC market as a whole, with all GPUs dropping in price to fit the new top dogs in. And more people is always a fantastic thing. Obviously, we hope they enter the ultra market as well. Now two big areas that have the potential to help us out outside of pure raw power is true DirectX 12 support and optimization and simultaneous multi-projection. Firstly, NVIDIA went and lied through their teeth with the 900 series, first claiming that DirectX 12 was supported, which technically is true, however they failed to include optimization, leaving NVIDIA users at a significant disadvantage versus their AMD counterparts with DirectX 12 titles like Hitman. The GTX 1080 and 1070, however, will feature the correct all-round DirectX 12 support originally expected. Now the other area is the multi-projection technology, which sounds very interesting, with the idea being that it would support multi-monitor and VR setups far better, actually presenting the user with the correct angles of the game world, however I wonder if this will lead to any benefit to us. I don't know, seeing as we're only on a single panel instead of the three which was demonstrated, if they can have the different angles built into the one screen. But they did show curved screens on there, so I'm still hopeful. At the same time, Ansel and the photography tool, I'm not too excited about both as they're proprietary NVIDIA implementations, so any game without NVIDIA's input will be lacking support. And I've heard continuous horrendous talk of what it's like for developers to work with NVIDIA, so it's never going to be a standard set of features in any game. But at the same time, the tools do sound really interesting nonetheless. Now, I do sincerely hope this will be the year people start to properly make the move to 1440p, with hopefully a slew of 1440p 21x9 monitors to come. With any luck, their prices will also fall, leading to a lovely introduction of new users into the ultra-wide market as well. On another front, with the GTX 1080 supposedly three times more power efficient than the Titan X, not that the Titan X was created in any way to be power efficient as a selling point, but it looks good on a graph, it should mean that we are looking at a fantastic new age of laptop gaming. Now, whilst that sadly is still a 16x9 area, we can hope that someday 21x9 will enter that space. But whichever way it falls, I'm always up for smaller and faster. Desktops don't have to be huge hulking machines as I'd love to shrink it down as small as possible and power draw to performance is absolutely one area that will help achieve smaller builds. However on this laptop front, AMD with their Polaris tech revealing in a few months, they are likely to take the majority of the laptop scene anyway. Now, obviously, NVIDIA are going to be shoveling the best possible comparison stats at us to make these GPUs look as best as they possibly can without lying. So it's important to note that claims like the GTX 1080 being more powerful than two 980s in SLI 
isn't really a mind-blowing fact. It's infamously the case, SLI is horrendously supported in many titles, and even when it is well supported, the second card is never running anywhere near full capacity. But nevertheless, it does sound awesome. The other piece of lovely footage was seeing Tomb Raider and The Division running on ultra settings on one card. However, it was at 1080p, which is just not impressive at all. Right now, 1080p is far from what I would class actual ultra settings gaming. 1440p is that new standard, and is what should have been used instead to show off the power of these cards. But potentially it does show that at 1440p the cards aren't able to push ultra settings at 60fps, which is a shame. Obviously anti-aliasing is a big factor here, but it still is a point to keep in mind. Furthermore, the videos were also clearly at 30fps, which made it worse when the host kept trying to point out that it was silky smooth, which it clearly wasn't, with stuttering and a clear lack of any silkiness. But it's not the end of the world, just it annoyed me that they should have known better what silky smooth FPS is. Overall, I am bloody excited with these two new cards. I just hope we don't see consoles having a significant negative effect on our graphical fidelity now that so many more of us will have this significant extra horsepower. So will you guys be looking to boost up those graphical settings, or instead just be looking for higher FPS to take a beautiful bump up when you secure yourself one of these new cards? On the other hand, are you going to hold out a while and see if Nvidia talks about a new GPU like a 1080 Ti? The card I am most excited for personally, and one that I can't make up my mind whether to wait for or not. I'm in a hard spot at the moment, as a 1080 sounds like a lovely move, but for the price versus power benefit, it's so much smaller than for example going from a 980 to 1080 versus a 980 Ti to 1080. So yeah, with money being a factor to remember, I've yet to decide what I shall do. So let me know down below what your thoughts are on this topic. It's always good to hear others where they stand and what you guys will be doing in the coming months. Anyway, give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe for future content. For anything else 21 by 9 head over to my channel, there should be something of interest there and if not then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover whatever it is. See you later.